London, Sydney, New York City, three of the world's most iconic cities. Welcome to the Travel Bible. In this video, we will compare three of the most iconic, recognizable cities in the world, London, New York City, and Sydney, to find out which one is the best. Once you've watched the video, we will then ask you which one you'd rather live in, which one you'd visit, and which one you'd avoid. So sit back and enjoy. Let's start off with their locations and their populations. So London, which is the capital city of England, is located in the southeast of the country and has a population of roughly 9.3 million, making it the third most populated city in Europe, only behind Istanbul and Moscow. New York City is located in the northeast of the United States of America. New York City is arguably the most popular city in the USA, but it's not actually the capital. That is Washington. It has a population of around 8.3 million and is the most populated city in the US. And finally, Sydney, which again is arguably the country's most famous city, but it isn't actually the capital, that is Canberra. Sydney is located in the southeast of the country in New South Wales, with a population of roughly 5.3 million and again, the most populated city in Australia. Now, the population of a city is subjective as to whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. A higher population usually translates to better employment opportunities because of their large economies. Big cities attract companies and business investment and are usually important cultural centres and research hubs. So we will award London with a win here. Let's take a look at another important aspect of a city's population, the people per kilometre squared. A more densely populated city usually means overcrowding, pollution and expensive crowded housing. So the higher here, the worse. So, London has around 5,500 people per square kilometre, Sydney 415, and New York City 10,200. So New York City is by far the most densely populated out of the three, Sydney being the least, and London sitting roughly between the two. So our winner here is Sydney. And finally, let's take a look at the average age in these cities. The younger here, the better. This is due to a younger workforce and less of an ageing population. So London sits at around 36.4 years old, New York City 35.5 and Sydney 34. That's another win for Sydney. Now let's move on to the cost of living. So let's look how wealthy these cities are by their GDP. New York City is the second richest city in the world in terms of GDP at an astonishing 1.7 trillion. London sits fourth with 708 billion and Sydney 32nd with 256 billion. So that there is a win for New York City. Now, these three cities are notoriously expensive, with some parts of London and New York City being the most expensive on the planet. So let's take a look at the average salary per month for these three cities. London is $2,800, New York City $4,400, and Sydney $3,500 US dollars. Now, bearing that in mind, let's look at the average price of a one-bedroom apartment in the city centre. London, $2,100, New York City $3,000 and Sydney $1,900. This means that living in London on the average salary, you will be spending 75% of your wage on your apartment's rent alone, 68% in New York City and 54% in Sydney. Again, giving Sydney the easy win here, followed by New York City, then London. For a quick fun novelty index measurement, let's look at the average McDonald's combo meal price, which is usually a decent indicator for seeing how expensive a place is. So, New York City is around $9.66, London $8.16, and Sydney $9.12. So next we move on to the environment. Let's look at the average temperature for these three cities. I think it's fair to say that most of the planet, including me, would rather live in a warm or hot place as opposed to a freezing cold place or a place that is too hot. So for this one, there is an obvious winner. London sits at a chilly average temperature of around 11 degrees. New York City, around 12.7, and Sydney at a much more pleasing average temperature of 17.7 degrees Celsius. So Sydney is our clear winner here. Another important aspect with regards to environment is the nature that surrounds the city. For this, we'll take a look at whether these cities have beaches, lakes, or mountains. So for beaches, New York City and Sydney, for lakes, London and Sydney, and for mountains, only Sydney has mountains. So again, a clear win for Sydney. For big, populated tourist hotspot cities, pollution and traffic can be a major issue. Whether or not they have a good public transport system plays a big factor in this too. So let's look at the pollution for these three cities. The higher the number here out of 100, the worse that it is. So London scores 59 out of 100, 
followed by New York City with 57, and then finally Sydney with 29 out of 100. Need we say any more for this one? With Sydney having such a lower population compared to New York City and London, this one is expected. Now let's look at the traffic commute time. So this is the average time to get into the city centre by taxi. So again, the higher here, the worse that it is. So London is 43.81, New York City 43.13, and Sydney 43.29. So this one was unbelievably close, with New York City just pipping Sydney for the win here, and then London just behind. However, they're so close that we can't actually give a winner here. Although London and New York City have a much bigger population, they do have excellent train and taxi services. And finally, we'll take a look at the top three things to do in each city according to TripAdvisor. Again, this is quite subjective, so let us know in the comments what you think. So for London, the top three things to do are the National Gallery, Churchill's War Rooms, and St. James's Park. For New York City, it's the Manhattan Skyline, the 9-11 Memorial, and Central Park. And for Sydney, it's the Sydney Harbour, followed by the Sydney Opera House, and then the Sydney Ferries. For this one, we have to give it to New York City. The skyline is arguably the most recognisable in the world. Central Park is a stunning area of natural beauty located in one of the busiest cities in the world, and the 9-11 Memorial is a must visit. So now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments below which one you'd live in, which one you'd visit and which one you'd avoid. We can't wait to read your comments. And while you're there, let us know which cities or countries we should do next. Personally, I'd live in Sydney, visit New York and avoid London. But perhaps I'm biased because I'm British and I would like to travel outside of my own country. I have so many amazing memories from visiting Sydney and New York City from when I was younger, I would love to go again. If you did enjoy the video or you learned something new, a like and a sub to the channel would be marvelous. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.